नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल आर व्यूवर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव ऑन इन सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट एंड यू आर वॉचिंग दिस लाइव ऑन पी एम ए विद्या चैनल नंबर टेन एंड डियर लर्नर्स एंड व्यूवर इन दिस स्पेसिफिक सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न मोर अबाउट फेडरलिज्म दैट इज डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन इन इंडिया दिस इज आर टॉपिक ऑफ दिस सेशन एंड यू मस्ट बी क्यूरियस एंड यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग अबाउट द फेडरलिज्म वॉट एक्सैक्टली फेडरलिज्म इज वैन वाई वी एज अ नेशन अडॉप्ट दिस सिस्टम and the this session is for 10th standard social science students and we have our expert with us in this uh, studio let's meet her you are dr wan thangpuri khobong very warm welcome ma'am very good afternoon and dear learner let me tell you that you are assistant professor from DESS NIE and CRT and if you have any query and question related to this specific topic feel free to connect to us through our a uh, various medium uh, that is you can call us on our telephone number that is 8800440559 either you can drop a mail at our email address that is dth.class10@cit.nic.in feel free to connect to us if you have any query or you want to know more about federalism so i'm without wasting much of our time let's quickly begin this session and as we have already told our learner the title of this session is federalism decentralization in india so i would uh, ask you about the content of the session ma'am what exactly you have for the learner ma'am yes thank you uh, today we will be discussing this uh, very important portion under the topic of federalism uh, federalism as a concept the significance the features it was discussed uh, in different sessions and even uh, in the last year this uh, two sessions was taken up on this federalism so uh, as decentralization is a very important aspect of federalism today we will be discussing how this power sharing which is the you know principle of federalism how power sharing is done at the local level especially in the context of india below the state level how power is shared hmm to the local government this aspect we are going to discuss today uh, we will be looking into the importance the significance and also the structure of this local government we will be looking in a very brief manner because this topic on local government especially it is a, a very huge topic at uh, you know higher secondary stage and then even in classics also a little bit about this uh, rural administration and urban administration it is already there a brief introduction it was already there but today we will be discussing in the context of power sharing in a democracy okay so ma'am shall we begin the session ma'am yes so ma'am uh, at the very beginning of the session i would like to ask you about why we as a nation adopt the system ma'am um when we talk about federalism see federalism is a you know a the practicing of this federal setup of government when there this federal setup of government is in practice we usually call it federalism so federal setup of government it is practiced by different countries across the world around 25 countries they are practicing this federal setup the opposite of this federal setup of government is unitary system unitary setup of government with some countries like china britain and all they are practicing this unitary system of government in india we have federal system of government uh, though in the constitution the term federalism it is not mentioned anywhere article 1 of our constitution it describes india as a union of in as a union of state okay but then considering the diverse you know uh, size of our country and then the diversity in different aspect in terms of region in terms of language in terms of you know culture uh, the idea of power sharing uh, there is the concept of uh, federalism is all about power sharing it is very much important and it is very much significant for our country so basically because of our the diverse you know um, size in terms of area in terms of population and diversity at different angle this uh, the concept of you know uh, the idea of federal uh, this system of government it is put into practice in our country so um, when we talk about federalism it is basically as i said power sharing 
you know, uh, at vertical level, not horizontal level. Uh, in class nine, you had studied power sharing at, you know, horizontal level. That is the different organs. Can we, yes. we have the presentation on screen? We yeah. Okay. Different uh, levels of mm. government, how they are sharing mm. power. You have, you have studied in class mm. nine also. And then um, power, when mm. it is shared horizontal, uh, vertically then the term uh, federal setup it comes now uh, when we talk about federal setup of government as i already said uh, it simply uh, you know refers to the sharing of power uh, hmm. between central authority and regional authority. authority this sharing of power it can be at two level it can be you know at more than two levels also okay so uh, this uh, concept of sharing of power it is very important in democracy in general and in our country in particular now uh, since we had already this uh, topic has uh, the idea of federalism the concept the important significance has already been discussed uh, this is one activity that i would like to suggest here uh, you can find out countries that has federal system of government as i already mentioned around 25 countries in the world they followed this uh, setup of government and that is quite interesting to know ma'am yes yeah so you can do it continent wise also hmm. so um, you, to help you in this activity you know you can refer to page 2 of the chapter on federalism also so um, in order to make your learning more interesting, uh, this activity can be carried out. Now, when we look at, uh, you know, India's uh, uh, federal setup, we have three tier system of government uh, at the central level for all over India, we have union government and then uh, below that level, we have another level of government, which is state government. And below that, it is local government. So, so today we will be discussing uh, in the context of local government because the way power is shared between these three level of government it differs okay how power is shared between union and state government and how power is shared with this you know uh, local government it is different so okay. today we will talk in the context of decentralization of okay. uh, um, power wow. okay now uh, why do we need third tier of government because see uh, in the beginning or Initially, the constitution had, you know, uh, given only these uh, two layers of government. There are only two layers of government, that is the union government and the state government. Right. But then uh, later on, this third tier of government, it was added upon. Hmm. Now, why do we need this third tier of government? Um, we need uh, this third tier of government because um, India, as I already said, it is a large country. Even, uh, you know, uh, many states in India they are larger than many countries in right. the European country, exactly. in the European continent. Okay, so for example, I'm just putting one example here: population of UP, like it is more than the population of Russia. Right. Okay. So for that matter, population of Maharashtra is also more than Germany. Exactly. And a small state like hmm. Manipur, hmm. also it is you know uh, they have a larger population than uh, European countries like Netherlands and all. So um, because of this sharing of power. Uh, within the state, that is um, at different level, uh, within the state it is also very important. And the second one, the second reason as to why power sharing is needed, needed at, the, at this third level, or why we need a third tier of government is because of this internal diversity. Within the state also you see in India, we see a lot of diversity in terms of region maybe. Within the state also you will see a region which are you know more colder, having a you know cold climate, a region that will have you know a hot climate. Hmm. And then there are lots of languages in terms of language diversity, linguistic diversity it is there in terms of you know culture and practices. So because of this kind of internal internal diversity you know this third tier of government it is also necessary so uh, these are the two important reasons that i would like to highlight here there may be an endless you know other reasons also but these are the two basic you know reason as to why power sharing is needed within a state okay hmm. now um, 
in order to understand more about diversity here, one activity, two, two three activity I just want to highlight here. Mm. I can take up like, you know, to understand the linguistic diversity, like, you know, you can just uh, uh, ask yourself how many language you speak, you can write it down, you can write down, you know, different salutation, greeting words in different language. For example, like if I talk about in my own dialect, I will say good morning is Jinka Tha. Hmm. Okay. So like um, we say like namaste most of the time, hmm. but uh, in the, the salutations also, you know, different uh, types of different way of saying it is there. So just to uh, understand the linguistic diversity, you can have, you know, this mental activity. And also um, you can write down the names of different languages uh, that you know in India. And also uh, you can find out a country across the world, uh, which is smaller in terms of size and population than your state. Uh, from wherever you are uh, watching this program. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the main points of decentralization. Decentralization here we are discussing in the context of power sharing uh, at the third level of, at the third tier of government. Okay. So we need local government or we need government at the local level because of the diverse need of our country Hmm. in terms of, you know, uh, regions, in terms of language, in terms of so many diversities, and in terms of the size and population of our country also, as I said. So because of this local government, as a third layer of government, it is created through the process of decentralization. What is decentralization? Decentralization simply means uh, that when a power is taken, when power is taken away from central and state government, and when it is given to a local government, it is known as decentralization. Okay. The idea behind decentralization mm. is that you know there are so many problems and issues at the local uh, level which are better known by the local people and it is also best settled at the local level mm -hmm. instead of a person coming and telling that you know this is your problem that is your problem this is how it has to be settled so it is better and it is uh, more apt you know that it comes from the people themselves right. so with this idea this is the idea behind you know uh, having a decentralized system decentralization in our country and then this is uh, this uh, decentralization also created the possibility of a larger participation of mm. people in decision making. Mm. Uh, since our, uh, you know, the basic principle of our uh, governing system in our country is, on, is democracy. So this kind of participation, it helped in inculcating, it helped in, you know, uh, giving more idea to democratic participation and hmm. it also realize the basic idea and the basic principle of democracy. Okay. So this is the, these are the idea behind why we are having uh, decentralization. Now, in order to give more power to the local government, there were, there has been so many steps, you know, uh, taken up by the uh, government for the last so many years. Um, now, if I uh, would sum up or if I would give, you know, uh, what are the major steps towards mm. decentralization without looking into the urban government mm. and also to the uh, and this uh, rural government. Uh, I just want to highlight this one before we go to this uh, rural local government and urban local government. Now, um, the constitution or uh, our country for the last so many years, it has taken so many steps, you know, towards more decentralization. It has become now, you know, constitutionally mandatory to hold regular election, elections, which was not, you know, mandatory before 1992. Hmm. Uh, because uh, in 1992, a very important, you know, uh, event took place in, in the form of two constitutional amendment, which we will be discussing later on also in detail. Now, uh, these major steps taken towards decentralization enable a mandatory, you know, uh, conduct of uh, uh, election at the local level and it also uh, provides a lot of provisions for reservation of seats for STSC for the weaker sections for women and also uh, independent institution was created in the process that is that election commission who are responsible for conducting election for local government both at the at the rural and this uh, urban level okay and then state government also you know um, through these different steps taken up by the uh, government of India, 
state government, they are required to share some powers and revenue with local government bodies because, mm. see, when we talk about decentralization, it is mainly uh, the extent of effective functioning of local government, it depends on the extent of giving power to them. So many a time state government, if they are not devolving or if they are not giving more power to local bodies, they cannot function uh, properly. Okay. But from 1992, this time, the more provisions were met for sharing of a power and also a revenue that is resources to local government body. And the nature of these parts and functions vary from state to state because of the kind of devolution, the kind of power that is shared by the state government to the local government, hmm. the nature of powers and functions, they it, it differ from vary. state to state. Okay. Hmm. And then to what extent it is effective in a particular state, this uh, panchayati raj or this urban you know uh, bodies to what extent it is uh, functional and it is effective also it will depend you know from the kind of power that is given to them so the nature of powers and function it varies from state to state now uh, local government uh, if we look at uh, the third tier of government in our country uh, we can uh, see two uh, you know level of government horizontally one is the rural at the rural level mm -hmm. uh, as we all know it is known as panchayati raj at the urban level it is known as municipalities it may be known by different level by different name mm -hmm. depending on the population of that particular town or cities okay and then another thing that i would like to add here is you know rural uh, local government it is not known by the name of panchayati raj in different tribal areas it may be known by different you know uh, uh, names for example like uh, in uh, in different you know uh, area in the tribal areas maybe in the northeast states it may be known as hmm. uh, village authorities you know gambura different hmm. names are given okay hmm. in different uh, area so uh, in this way you know local government at the rural level we have and then at the urban level we have different you know urban bodies some it is known by municipalities uh, by the name of municipalities uh, also by the name of municipal corporation and then a town area committee in a small town for example so uh, local government in this way in our country we have two uh, you know uh, uh, local government one at the rural uh, area and one at the urban area now rural local government as we had already mentioned by the name of uh, panchayati raj this uh, panchayati raj which are as i already mentioned known by different name uh, they are directly elected and then they are the decision making body for the entire village for the entire area and they are basically entrusted with uh, rural development uh, of that particular area now uh, here since we had talked about how these uh, rural local bodies have been strengthened over the years, mm. the different uh, the result of the different steps taken up by the government over the years, I just want to highlight one important, you know, uh, and a very significant step taken up by the um, government of India relating to this. That is the 73rd constitutional amendment uh, that was carried out uh, in 1992-93. Uh, this is a very important you know uh, amendment uh, to the constitution because uh, through this uh, amendment act only this um, local government it became you know constitutionally recognized body mm -hmm. And then, uh, especially this Panchayati Raj, the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act it added this part nine that is known as the Panchayats. And then it gave a practical step to the Article 40, which is uh, there in Directive Principle of State Policy that says that the state should take steps to organize local government and then they should be uh, empowered so that they can function as a you know, an effective local governing institution at the local level. So this directive principle of state policy, which is in the form of directing the state to organize uh, Panchayati Raj, it gives, you know, a practical step to this and it became mandatory, uh, you know, to have this uh, Panchayati Raj in, uh, to set up Panchayati Raj in every state. And this, uh, 
Amendment Act had also, you know, I will just highlight like uh, a few important points here. Uh, it also, you know, envisaged this Gram Sabha as a foundation of this uh, local rural local government, and it also provides. It also suggests that, that there should be three three tier system of this uh, rural local government, and then it also talks about the election of members and chairperson reservation of seats and the duration of the panchayats. Also, it it is highlighted and it is you know elaborated upon by this 73rd constitutional amendment act so this give a constitutional status to panchayati raj which is the rural local government and then urban local government uh, it signifies this uh, governance of urban areas and then a very significant steps that was taken up by government of india relating to the strengthening of urban local government is the 74th amendment act of 1992 it added part 9 a that is known as the municipalities and then um, this uh, act uh, 74th uh, amendment act had also talked about you know uh, the method of election uh, reservation and the different ways of strengthening this urban uh, local government okay so i would like to uh, conclude here by saying that you know uh, decentralization of government in our country it you know makes the system of our local government very mm. strong and then the largest experiment of democracy anywhere in the world system mm. of local government that we have in our country it shows that you know it is the it is showing the largest uh, it is the you know uh, one of the ex largest experiment of democracy in the world about 36 lakhs elected representative are there in these local bodies and it is uh, these elected members they are in itself uh, bigger than population of many countries also so this uh, setup that we have in our country the third tier of government it is also you know realizing the basic principle of democracy that is democratic participation of people in decision making and then the constitutional status given through this 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act had also helped deepen democracy in our country it increased women representative and their voice also however like you know we should also acknowledge that there are so many difficulties there are so many steps that needs to be taken up in order to strengthen and make it as a more effective democratic you know governing institutions at the local level i'm just highlighting a very common you know mm -hmm. difficulties like irregular election less devolution of power inadequate resources apart from this also there are so many other you know problems that is uh, you know, uh, uh, creating a problem for the effective functioning of local government, mm. uh, both at the rural and at the urban level. Okay. Right. We would uh, love to know more about federalism, but uh, actually we are running very short of time right now. But uh, let me thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for being with us and for your detailed information on federalism, that is decentralization in India. Thank you so very much, ma'am. Thank you all. And dear learner, it's time for me to wrap up this session, but you stay tuned to PM Avidya channel for more informative program. Me, Renu Bhatt is taking your leave. Namaskar.